Hey guys, in this video I want to show you the, the three lines principle. Years ago I made a German video and I decided to make an English video so everybody can understand it and it's more like updated. Yeah, the three line principle is something you can apply on your equipment. But the setup itself can vary from, from mission to mission or unit to unit. So there's not one uh, final line setup. But what I tell you will be uh, some kind of setup for recon missions. Of course, right now there's no uh, specialization included in the setup. So this is quite a basic setup with a free lines principle to show you what the free lines principle is about and what it means. Yeah, the free lines principle from the military is not the same like lining clothing in the outdoor sector or on outdoor activities. It's more like dividing the equipment to different stages of an operation. At first, let's start with the third line. The third line is the big backpack. It includes all luxury uh, stuff like the sleeping bag, food, drinking stuff, uh, like water <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. So let me show you. The idea is if I take away my backpack, the hip belt is optional. I still have all my stuff for fighting on me. And the backpack itself, yeah, is the third line. And the third line consists out of two lines or like a third line A and B. Don't touch the microphone. The third line itself consists out of third line A and third line B. One of them is the day pack. So now if I get into contact, I have to move fast. I cannot move fast, fast with the big backpack. So it's quite simple to open it and take away my day pack. Inside the day pack, there's stuff for living in the field for 24 hours. But now at first I want to show you what's inside the big backpack and then I want to talk about the day pack. On the outside you can already see my sleeping mat, so I can sleep comfortable and warm. It is a foam map, so even if there is a hole inside, uh, it still works, so quite light but uh, not that compact. But I, like, I really like this. Now, inside here I have food. The amount of food depends on the length of the mission and the climate. Most of the time I'm using freeze-dried food because it's lightweight and quite compact, but the disadvantage is you have to get water heat it up and put it inside there. It can be practical to add some wet food, so food that is already wet. It's more heavy, but you don't have to add water and you can eat it cold on the run. Of course, I also bring some coffee. And this is, yeah, depending on the length of the mission. On the side, I have a big rain cover for the backpack. Inside, Inside a dry bag, I have a thin insulation jacket. So when I'm moving and it's starting getting cold, this can be quite handy because if you wear a thick jacket, it can be too warm and then you get sweaty and wet. So a thin insulation jacket can be cool. Additional to this, also depending on the climate, the area you are in, is in a waterproof bag, spare socks, maybe spare underwear and liner gloves for your hands, maybe from merino wool or fleece liner glove, so your hands can also stay warm in colder conditions. But you still have to be able to shoot. Then next is a big tarp. A tarp is practical because you can use it in different ways. The disadvantage of a tarp is it's not 
like a waterproof tent so you can get wet from the ground or if it's raining quite heavy and there's a wind water can come in from the side so if you have a tarp you may want to consider adding a bb bag to your setup but a tarp is more modular or practical in military operations than an observer like a one-man bb tent or a tent because you can use the tent or a bb bag in only one specific way and with a tarp you can place it flat or you can build an op from it or you can do a lot of stuff with it you can even sleep with like maybe with two or three people underneath this one tarp yeah sleeping of course important is a sleeping bag which is suitable for the temperature you are operating in in this case it's the new TSS uh, multicam black version from Carinthia and it has a comfort limit of minus 8 degrees Celsius if I remember right so this one is quite suitable for the temperatures which are here right now for military operation or military stuff I recommend synthetic sleeping bags since they even work when it's getting wet or really really wet and if you have down sleeping bag and it's raining this can be a cold night and you can freeze to death yeah if you want to be able to repel somewhere without climbing only repelling it can be practical to have like a thin accessory cord which you can rappel off in this case not in tactical colors i have got the Edelried red line 2 it's a from made from aramid or kevlar and it's only six or seven millimeters in diameter it's really light it is 40 meters of rope so i can rappel 20 meters when i double it or 40 meters if i take one strand and this is quite cool because sometimes you have to rappel somewhere and then you can use this i made a special video about rappelling and i will link it somewhere here in the info box or so on of course then you also need carabiner and climbing harness or only carabiner and rigger spelt but i will talk about this later and of course maybe you are in an area where there are no cliffs then of course you don't need this rope or, or not such a long rope but bringing some rope is never wrong also quite important especially if you operate with your squat is water filtration so here i have the catadine tactical camp filter this is a 10 liter dry bag and has got a filter element inside so we can get to a stream fill up 10 liters carry it to the camp or to the op hang it in a tree and then we can drink this water filtered right out of the stream and don't have to bring all the water of course this also depends on the area you are in because in some areas you have a lot of wells or rivers or seas lakes uh, and some other areas have almost no water at all and you will have to bring all the water speaking from water of course you will have to bring a water bottle or something to carry your water so maybe a three liter um, water bag inside your backpack or a strong bottle but i recommend you to not only have one thing to put your water in have at least two so you have redundancy and you can place something in the big backpack and something in the day pack yeah i personally bring a trash bag i will have this inside my backpack in emergency situations i could use this as a visual panel but i can also use it to put all my dump and all my trash inside it and bring it with me back home because i don't want to leave any traces yeah some spare fuel for my cooking system or for my stove yeah and that's it with the big backpack now let's jump to the day pack yeah the day pack is usually carried in the third line but some people count it as their second line so they say second line a and second line b uh, yeah now in this video 
I will talk about this as a third line. So yeah, we get in contact or maybe we get close to the area where we want to observe. So we will make a hide for the big backpack and we'll only bring what we have on our body and the day pack so we can operate and move much easier and undetected because this is of course lighter. Yeah, the day pack now is packed for colder temperatures like right now it's around about freezing especially in night it can be quite cold and windy so inside the backpack i have the following maybe spare magazines or loose ammunition small stuff like tea or coffee uh, emergency bv bag yeah this is a civil one, so it's not an olive or black. But when all things go wrong and I have, have to sleep somewhere with this stuff I have with me, this can save my life. Inside this, I have my thick jacket. It's a thick insulation jacket, military style. It is uh, warm and also protects from some rain and winds. Then you will need food for at least 24 hours since it's a day pack so you will have to be able to use it for 24 hours to be in the field. <laughs> yeah right now I have something warm so I have to put warm water inside to eat it this is a spaghetti bolognese and I have got this muesli also from Track Me Eat. I only have to pour water inside, mix it and I can eat it. Now water. Yes, water for one day. So this is three liters of water. When it's around about freezing or when it's freezing I don't like to have a hydration system on the back with a tube because it can freeze up. So I will use this. Yeah this water bag. Additional camo camouflage can be useful to build an OP or just to get myself camouflaged. Yeah I'm already wearing this olive but yeah of course a camo pattern is even better. This is con camo. This is the ghost hoodie from ghost hood. It's really lightweight camouflage and this can come in handy if you're doing some OP stuff and so on. Yeah, of course, it's really cold. I have tea with me and I have got the meal which I have to use with warm water. So my stove in this case is in my day pack. I have a multi-fuel stove or a, a, I'm not sure, benzene stove. So I will use liquid and not gas. Yeah, right now at this temperatures I could still use gas, but I'm testing the Soto stove right now. So we'll use this and it's quite cool because it's relatively silent and it works when it's really cold and it has got a lot of power. And the best thing is you can use different fuels and you can fill up the fuel bottle with the fuel out of cars. The manufacturer doesn't recommend it to use car fuel, but you can. So. That's quite cool. If you have a normal gas bottle, it's not easy to refill it. But here, it's really easy. You can find the fuel almost everywhere. Sometimes, or most of the time, I'm using a stove from Optimus. This can also handle petroleum, kerosene, and a lot of other fuels. With this one, I'm not that sure. I am just started testing it. So stay tuned, more information will follow. Additional to the IFAC I'm wearing on my second line, I have got this SAM splint inside my day pack. The SAM splint is something to... Oh my god, my English sucks. If you break your arm, you can use this to stiffen your arm. So yeah, this is a cool thing to help you keep moving when something is broken or to, to help you. <laughs> All right, uh, some additional stuff in the third line, which can uh, vary. Maybe I want to have it in the day pack. Maybe I want to have it in the big backpack. Is yeah, like spare batteries to recharge my phone, recharge my watch, 
or for recharging or changing the radio. Hygiene stuff like a toothbrush and toothpaste. Paste? I think that's the right word. And also something to wash myself. Then this is a small IFAC kind of stuff, but it's more for normal injuries, like a small cut or something. And also a bit of survival stuff. So I have a fire starter inside here and a second tourniquet. Also important, if you are on a long, long route, we may want to carry some extra toilet paper. Maybe the, yeah, the dry ones or wet ones like combat wipes. They are black, order free, and it can refresh you when you have pooped or when you wash, want to wash your body or wash your face. So this can be quite cool. And they are bio-recreatable. So you will leave almost no trace or after some weeks they will be gone. All right, now talking about the second line. The second line includes all stuff you need for fighting. So your primary gun or your rifle and all stuff you need for the rifle. So magazines, uh, communication, for communicating with the, your squad. And that's almost it. Also grenades, signal stuff, uh, maybe flashbangs, smoke grenades, and of course the pistol and spare magazines for the pistol. So this is quite important. Yeah, now the second line is quite easy to describe. All things you need for combat. Also a part of the second line is the IFAC. The IFAC consists out of the tourniquet, easy to find with easy access, um, best case with both hands. This is to stop critical bleeding. Scissors to cut open clothing to see the injury and the IFAC itself easy to find, um, maybe marked with a cross or with some visible stuff. And inside here I have this small IFAC. has got emergency blanket, gloves, a bandage, a quick lot and usually also an Israeli bandage but in this case I don't have the Israeli bandage with me. Now normally you will never undress the second line and put away your rifle. When all things go wrong and you have to escape a long route back home and all your magazines are empty and maybe also the battery of your communication is empty. Maybe you have to get rid of this stuff to stay alive. If you still have your pistol and magazines for your pistol, you will keep this, but you will th throw away your chest trick because it's empty. It only slows you down. It can be an idea to use the day pack and bring the day pack with you, but maybe not, it all depends. Okay, so now I can just place this somewhere in my first line. Yes, now I'm down to my first line. The first line is all stuff I'm wearing right now. So the clothing, pants, jacket. A jacket is a smock. This stuff is from UF Pro. Thank you, UF Pro, for providing me this high quality equipment. And yeah, this is with what you still can operate for a sp specific amount of time. Yeah, right now, as I have said, you are on a recon mission, or I am like on a recon mission, or suited for a recon mission, whatever. Right now, I'm, of course, I'm not on a mission, or I'm not talking about something specially only for military guys stuff. Uh, so. Yeah, with this stuff, I want to be able to stay alive for a specific amount of time. So I need some food, something to stay dry and so on. It can be a good idea to bring the isolation jacket with me and my day pack so you can mix up the lines. But I can also stay alive with this simple layer of clothing. 
First, let me take away my gloves. So it's quite easier to show you all the small things that are inside the first line. At first, I have to be able to navigate. Usually you know the area you are in, but only for a specific level or in a specific area. So you need GPS. I have got a watch from Garmin, which is GPS compatible, so I can track where I'm walking, I can save waypoints and I can navigate. Um, yeah, some time ago I was using a Garmin Fortrex. It's a small GPS, which you can also wear on the wrist. But now this watch can do the same, so I'm using this watch. But it can fail. Maybe the battery will be empty. So additional to this GPS stuff, I'm using a map. Of course, made waterproof with thin uh, glue-on foil. So. This is a map from the area I'm in and I can use this to navigate. But the map alone is not enough. So I also have got a compass and yeah, so I have redundancy because I have the GPS when this fails or when it's empty, I can use compass and the map to navigate and find my way home or somewhere else. Then for building a height or an OP, I bring a gardener scissors to cut small branches. I also bring a foldable saw to cut thicker branches. Yes, I want to make sure I don't forget anything, so I'm searching my pockets. Yeah, of course, the pistol we already talked about. Then, uh, you want to have your feet as dry as possible. So, I have spare socks in a waterproof bag. It can also be good to have a spare underwear in a waterproof bag, but I'm okay with only spare socks, because if you're walking for a long, long amount of time, your feet will start to get wet by sweat or by water. So, if you can change your socks, is, is quite cool. Yeah, of course, the boonie, or when it's cold, I can also use this. So something warm for your head to keep yourself warm. Then, continue. Inside here, I have got a big survival set. It has got a lot of stuff in it. I already made a video about it, but if I remember right, the video is in English. It includes stuff to make fire, to cook a bit. Uh, yeah, it's like a lot of survival stuff. Uh, I will talk about this in a separate video someday. Then, on the other side, here I have got a small water filter. Yeah, in this area there's a lot of water, a lot of streams, a lot of lakes. So I can use this small military water filter to just fill it with water, screw on this cap, and then can drink right out of it. This is quite cool. It's the Katadyne B3 Tactical. In the next bag, I have some snacks. I have these crackers. And I also have got an emergency ration inside, usually. Here we have the spare magazine for the pistol and some light, uh, red or green, because of this I can make myself visible to a helicopter or to friendly units or whatever. This can be handy. Yeah, I want to make myself visible but sometimes this little light is not enough. So I've got a flare or it's like a magnesium light. So this will be really, really bright and will be visible for, I don't know, a lot of kilometers. In these pockets, I have got a small survival set. This is also some basic first aid stuff, because inside here I have got the emergency blanket. 
I very, um, I'm carrying at least two emergency blankets because you can do a lot with them. They can protect you from the cold, they can protect you from the heat, and you can build a shelter with them. Also, I've got, uh, a, I'm not sure how it's called, a spark, a fire starter. Also, some tape, a button compass, a condom, um, a tampon, some cordage. And yeah, I think that's it. On the other side of my arm pocket, I have got a small cup for the coffee and the tea I have with me. And also, if I want to drink something, someone can put water inside here and can drink it. This is quite cool. Then I have got a whistle. So if I want to be hearable, I can use this or to give a signal, I can use this. Face paint, spare batteries for my headlamp and of course, instant coffee. Now the smog is almost empty. The backside of the smog has got a big pocket. Yeah, it can be nice to have a wind jacket. Wind jackets can be packed really small. So in this case, I've got this small wind jacket. It's only that small, but if I need it, I can protect myself from winds. I can use this also as some kind of camouflage. I can wear it over my smog or underneath if I'm walking around and it's really windy because this will avoid the wind chill effect. Then, protecting me from rain because maybe it will rain, maybe it will rain a lot. I will use a hard shell jacket. This one is from Arctic Sleeve, the Alpha jacket. It's quite a strong military grade rain jacket. Also breathable, so there's some ventilation and ventilation zippers in the armpits to help me ventilate even more. When it's raining a lot and for a long time, water will float down the jacket to the pants and then inside the boots. This can suck. So it can be nice to have a rain pants. It's also from Arctic Sleeve, but it's the Alpha LT rain pants, if I remember right. It's lighter, LT is light, uh, so it's still relatively compact and it protects my legs from winds and from wet stuff. Yeah, now the smog is empty. Now let's talk about the pants. Yeah, military great pants also have pockets so you can put stuff inside them. On my left side, I've got a first aid kit. You see, I have all, a lot of survival and first aid stuff. Inside here are some bandages and some medicine like uh, against he headache, uh, something for blisters on the feet. So this is really useful and I want to have this with me all the time. I've got this mosquito net that protects me from mosquitoes. And so right now it's getting quite cold. This is not that important, but when it's warmer or when it's summer, this can be really good. Now in this pocket, I've got a light, a flashlight, which is quite bright to be able to point somewhere or make me visible and use it to find my way out of a dark big building or to tunnels or something. On this side, I've got leg loops for my harness or for my rigger's belt. Because here I'm wearing a rigger's belt from Arcturix which can be used to repel. When I use it with the leg loops and the big HMS carabiner, I can repel 
quite safely and with some comfort. And it's still really light. I can use this HMS Carabiner for different stuff, but mainly for repelling with a Manta hitch, because then I only need this, this friction hitch, put it inside this Carabiner and I can repel somewhere. To see at night, uh, yeah, usually you use night vision goggles. I don't have them, so I have this headlamp. It has got white light, but also red light. And red light is really important because it doesn't blind you when you're somewhere outdoor and it's not that easy to see. But the main reason for red light is so it doesn't take your night vision capabilities. If you use white light, it's bright, it bl uh, blinds you and red light doesn't. Yeah, of course, military grade and I have spare batteries uh, in the smog and so I can use this for a long time. I've got a spoon. It's made from titanium, so really light. A neck warmer and a thin beanie for my head. And yes, uh, the last thing is this small headlamp. It's really compact and lightweight and it has got a small whistle on it and also, of course, yeah, red light. So it can happen that I lose this headlamp or maybe all batteries will be empty or the headlamp will be damaged somehow. And then I have my spare headlamp, which is really compact and lightweight to, yeah, to see in the night. Yeah, right now I'm using this mask, but of course, you can also use face paint or a thicker mask to protect you from the cold. Yeah, and boots, socks, merino shirt. And I think that's it. I think that was quite a long video. I hope you liked it. And please leave a comment if you want to know more about such gear. And thank you for watching. Please uh, don't mind my bad English. Uh, see you next time. Bye. Ah, subscribe, subscribe.